Well, we're back. Sometime last year, Chairman of the Progressives Governors Forum and Governor of Kebi State, Abubakar Atikuba Gudu, after a meeting with President Buhari, had announced that the APC's National Convention will hold in February. But one month and a few weeks after, we haven't heard anything yet from the Ketika Committee as regards the exact date for that exercise. As a matter of fact, we are hearing reports that um, perhaps the Ketika Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, chaired by the Yobe State Governor, May Malapuni, may have decided to postpone the National Convention due to ongoing reconciliation process uh, that is ongoing as a result of the just concluded state congresses across the country. So we're seeking some thoughts from someone who should know. We're joining uh, Dr. Otive Guzo, who is a chief, the Chief of Staff to the Deputy Senate President and is joining us live from our Abuja studio. Good morning, Doctor. Thank you very much for having me. How do you react to what is now being seen as a possible postponement of your party's national convention? Well, um, the thought that um, the convention will be postponed is just a speculation. As of now, the official position we know from the Ketika Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, CECPC, is that the convention will hold on the 5th of February. However, we know that um, the concern that the convention may be postponed is because um, at the last meeting, the committee talked about setting up a, a budget committee and other structures. And uh, there are certain things that are supposed to be done before a convention holds, um, co various committees to be set up, and um, INEC to be informed 21 days to the time. We've not seen some of these things. I think that's why there are these uh, speculations. What I can just say is that if you look at the terrain today, you will see at least four sets of people. Um, one set within the party who think that um, the convention should hold now in February 5th uh, because they think that if it is not held, it will be injurious to the party. And they've made their statements public. There's another group who think that um, the convention should not hold now. It should be postponed to June. Uh, the chief whip of the Senate actually wrote uh, an open letter uh, saying that um, he fears that there will be implosion of the party if the convention is held now before primaries is held in June. Mm. And uh, there is a third group who think that whether in February or in June, what is necessary is to have a credible convention that will do the normal thing that the convention does to be able to approve policies and programs for the party, to be able to elect national working committee members, to be able to approve a new constitution for the party because the party set up a constitution uh, review committee a long time ago. But there is a fourth and problematic group, which is made up of hirelings, people who are not members of the party, uh, but they are more interested in the party convention than members. And, and in my place, there is a saying that, what has that damn in Kokoro Yukbe? You cannot drink water for somebody that is eating radium. When you are eating radium, you have to have water close by. And so these hailings, they are not members of the party, opposition elements, they are trying to scuttle, they are trying to paint the party in bad light, they are sponsoring people to make comments, they are sponsoring people to write, they are sponsoring people to television stations 
to make the convention an issue. But in my view, it's not an issue. In every political party, there are is the internal debates. In fact, some people call, is, uh, uh, allude to it that this crisis, there is no crisis. It's internal debate within the party. And if you look at the nature, every political party is different. You know? If you look at the constitution of the All Progressive Congress, it states clearly that All Progressive Congress are made up of true progressives and patriots. And the philosophy of the party is social democracy. And based on that, you have many activists, you have people of different hues within the party. But a kind of party like that allows this kind of debate that we are seeing. I know of a party, for instance, where somebody, uh, an aide to the governor, just complained in December that uh, the quantity of rice and uh, the money he was given for Christmas was too small. The following week, he was, uh, his appointment was terminated. But APC is a democratic party that allows these debates to, to, uh, to take place. And you should know that the party was formed by four different parties come together. And the party is adept at these issues of negotiation, of bringing the views of people together to fought what will be in the final analysis in the best interest of the party. And they have done that credibly well. Uh, and we all know that um, when there were challenges within the party, this uh, CCPC was formed, and today they have built the party to an enviable status that you see that uh, three serving governors can join the party. That will give you an indication of what they have done. So I am confident that the party leaders, they will do the needful. And uh, so that people can also stop this uh, speculation, discuss all the options, and come out with a position that will be in the interest of the party. And I trust that given our experiences since the formation of the party, you know, this is one of the few parties that you see all the former chairmen of the party, from B.C. Akande to Yegu to Adam Sushimule, are still members of the party. They are still key stakeholders of the party. They are still engaging. So we have sufficient experience in uh, organizing these issues, in uh, uh, organizing different tendencies within the party to come to a position that will make the party stronger, that will reposition the party. So I, I, I'm quite confident and I, I don't see any fear in what is happening within the party. In any case, I think it's normal. Dr. Guzo, if you continue talking like this, I fear that I won't be able to ask you as many questions um, during this program because we just have a few more minutes. But you have said that um, the reports of having um, this convention postponed is mere speculation. I'd like to probe that a little bit further. Um, you, you made mention about the Electoral Act that requires your party to inform INEC of this convention. The days, I believe, is 30, not 21. And from my calculation, we're really running out of time. There are also people who are saying another reason will be that um, it is inappropriate to hold a national convention when the party's membership register is yet to be ratified at the national level. But I'd like you to speak specifically to the need for your party to approach this convention with a united front, seeing many of the disagreements and fights that followed the state congresses, with some of your party members even jumping, jumping or shifting camp. Yes, thank you very much. I, I think I, I agree with you uh, completely that there is the need for everybody to go united. And like I said earlier, there is sufficient experience for that to be done. And for that to happen is to ensure justice, fairness, and equity. And uh, like you noted, in some of the in few states, 
there are challenges with the state congress and you know there is a process before a national convention can be held you have state congresses you're supposed to even have zonal congresses then before you have a national convention i know that some political parties have done it the opposite round. do national convention and later come and do zonal conference and later do come and do state conference but what is worth doing is worth doing well so i i, I think that um, i agree with you completely the the party need to go united and i think there is sufficient experience on how to make sure that everybody is brought on board if you look at uh, when the party was formed in 2015 and after the primaries which was an indirect primaries all the presidential candidates joined up with uh, uh, president muhammad buharu at that time you know too so what i think we need to insist in and that is where some of us you know, uh, who are stakeholders in the party insist is that we must do things properly. In fact, when the party was formed in, in, in uh, 2013, 2014, there, there was a, 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 a national convention committee uh, headed by Dr. Usman Bugaje, and I had uh, the opportunity of being a member. We're actually trying to change the entire trajectory of how national conventions are organized we see it at times when it is done in the uk in us when you have a national convention and you have a conference somebody gives a keynote address and give the the issues of the moment for instance in nigeria how do we reduce poverty how do we deal with insecurity how do we deal with issues of corruption how can we grow the economy in the face of pandemic how do we ensure that nigeria does things properly in the face of what we are seeing globally of volatility, of uncertainty, of complexity, of you know, ambiguity, of diversity, and increasing disruption. So, for some of us, we need to plan the conference and make sure we do conference that is different. Right. A new conference that is, you know, is, is, is reflective of our ideological position as a social, as a party whose ideology is anchored on social democracy. Dr. So Ibuzo, joining us, let me just jump in very quickly uh, very to but ask you. If you are joining this party, you must imbibe the aims and objectives of the party itself and the philosophy of the party. How effective do you think the ongoing reconciliation process is? I remember speaking with a two-time former lawmaker of the APC from Ogun State, who did mention that a committee visited the state. Uh, not much of complaints were laid, but that doesn't mean, or that did not mean, that there were not people who had real and genuine grievances. So there's the question of whether uh, your party members trust, you know, even the process of reconciliation. How effective is the current process? And what are your thoughts about ensuring that all of these grievances are resolved in due time? I, I think that it's too early to say what is the outcome of the reconciliation. The Adamu Abdullahi Reconciliation Committee is doing its work right now, and we just have to wait for the report. But uh, given the experiences of the party and what he has done in the past, I'm very, very confident. And what this Mebuni uh, uh, Executive uh, Ketika Committee has done in the past uh, few months. Uh, I'm confident that they will be able to resolve all those issues because reconciliation has to be based on fairness, equity, and justice. And where people have been shortchanged, you know, there has to, and in politics, you do uh, horse trading. There has to be discussion about how they can be accommodated. And I think that if these principles are followed, there is no reason. One of the major things that is holding the people of APC together is that we're all here for 16 years when the PDP was in power. So there is a, a kind of, you know, understanding that we cannot allow this country to go back to Egypt, you know. So that in itself will give everyone some form of, you know, caution that we need to do things properly. And also, 
that we don't repeat the mistakes of the People's Democratic Party that made them to lose power. So I'm sure the leaders are conscious of all of this. And uh, based on that, I'm confident that the reconciliation process will come out fine and the party will come out stronger, will be repositioned to be able to deal with the continuing challenges that face us as a nation. Because political parties, it's not just a question of using it as a platform to take power, but using it as a platform, especially as a social democratic party, to be able to affect the life of citizens, to you know, bring people out of poverty, to have a stable economy, and to have a country where there is equity, justice, and fairness. All right. So we hear that um, there's this plan by some members of the party to push for a consensus candidate. And their reason is that, that well, it will cut costs, it will save the party from crises and, um, you know, stuff like that. But walk us through the factors that will be required to make these successful. You know, for instance, you know, what happens if during the process there are cases of sharp disagreements? How much of um, implication does that have? on the party that prides itself of 40 million membership. Th thank you very much. I, I think that the party's constitution is very clear that uh, we can get our candidates through uh, direct primaries, indirect primaries, or consensus. And um, if you look at it, during the last uh, congresses that took place across the states of the Federation, in many of the states of the Federation, they got their candidates to consensus and there was no issue whatsoever. In a few states, there were issues, which is the reconciliation that is going on now. I, I think that um, it is important to test all the, all the options. And if we are able to get uh, a presidential candidate through consensus, that will lessen the friction, the acrimony, and the, the need to do a lot of reconciliation after the convention. But if we cannot get it through consensus, then we, there are options that are open to us through direct or indirect uh, uh, primaries. And uh, we hope that, um, you know, uh, we are confident really that these issues will pan out. But what all of us must guide against are those fourth group of people who are exaggerating the internal discussions and debates within the party, people who are trying to paint the party black, you know, uh, paint the party bad, people who are paid to say things to bring the party to ridicule and public odium. Because no member, genuine member of a party, if you have grievances about the procedure, there are organs. You have your uh, World Esco, local government Esco, um, state Esco, and even the convention uh, extraordinary uh, convention plan, ethical uh, and uh, extraordinary convention planning committee to ventilate your views mm. and, and make sure. I get that a point that right uh, it was. Uh, we have that to go now is uh, about because of debate. time. I mean politics. It's about debate, yes. consensus building, discussion, dialogue, and decision making. We have to go now, Dr. Ibuzo. You know, I warned you about your comprehensive answers. But if you can answer in one, just one minute, um, do you agree with those who are calling for a double convention? By that, let's just do everything together. Chairman, National Working Committee, the President, they say it will cut cost. I, I think that... Like I, like I said earlier, there are different issues. The people who have uh, argued for a double convention uh, half point, people who are saying convention should be held now half point, my position is that the leadership of the party should interact with people, discuss, and choose a method that will be in the interest of the party and explain to members for the basis for the decision making. But I'm confident that at the end of it all, the party will be better repositioned to deliver the dividends of democracy to Nigerians.
Dr. Otive Bozo is Chief of Staff to the Deputy Senate President and it joins us live from our Abuja studio. Thank you for your contribution. It's my pleasure. That's our show today. Thanks for being a part of it. It's Friday and I'm so excited about it. I'll see you again on Monday. Have a great day.